Hey guys, in this video I am comparing these four cameras from Sony. Now this is intended to be really a buyer's guide for those of you who are perhaps new to the Sony APS-C E-mount lineup, or maybe you have one of these cameras and you're looking at upgrading what new features do the other models have, check this video out. And as usual, I will have buying links posted down below in the description, so check those out for current pricing. Let's get started. So here are the four cameras next to one another, A6000, A6300, A6500, and the newest A6400. That's why it's last in this row. So I'm gonna start by talking about the similarities between these four cameras, and then I'll go into what makes each one of these a little bit more unique. All of these cameras have the same 24 megapixel APS-C size sensor inside of them. Now, the sensor in the A6300 was updated with some copper components that allegedly makes it a little bit better in low light situations. So from A6300 and above, the sensors are slightly improved, but in general, all of the sensors are identical in size and resolution. All four of these cameras record full HD video in the excellent XAVCS format, which is great. The A6000 does 1080p, and these three cameras also do 4K. All four of them also have built-in Wi-Fi, which allows you to easily transfer photos and now video using the free mobile app from Sony. All four cameras will shoot in RAW, RAW and JPEG, fine and standard. The A6300 and above will also give you the option to shoot in extra fine, which is JPEG. All four of these cameras feature excellent autofocusing systems. In fact, that is one of the differentiating factors between these cameras and their competitors. The autofocus on these cameras is much, much better than the competition. All four of these cameras use the exact same E-mount, so you can use the exact same lens on an A6000 as you could on the newest A6400. What's great about Sony's ecosystem when it comes to lenses is that unlike Canon and other competitors who have released multiple various mounts for their new lines of cameras and you have to keep updating and upgrading your lenses, Sony has one mount for their mirrorless camera line. So you can use full frame Sony lenses on these APS-C bodied cameras without any issues and vice versa. You can use APS-C lenses on the full frame camera bodies. All four of these cameras feature the exact same Sony NPFW50 battery. It's not big, it's pretty compact. And so if you are planning on shooting throughout the day, I would definitely recommend carrying multiple batteries with you. Fortunately, these batteries are not too expensive. You can buy a pack with a charger for not a whole lot of money off of Amazon. All four of these cameras are compact, they're easy to use, and they are well built, and that is why they are so loved and so many people have started using these cameras over the last couple of years. So that is it for the similarities. Now let's walk through the differences between these models. So the first thing to understand is that Sony has made updates to this camera every single time the name has changed. So the A6000 was originally released back in April of 2014. That is the oldest model here. And the most recent A6400 was just released back in February of 2019. So there is a five year difference between these two cameras on the left and on the right. So let's start with the A6000. This is a camera that has everything that you would need if you're just planning on taking photos and shooting 1080p video. This has an electronic viewfinder that is excellent, has high resolution, a great screen on the back, menu system is relatively simple to use once you get used to it. It is an excellent compact camera. I purchased this one back in 2015, and so I've been using it for about four years or so, probably a little bit more than that, and it has never let me down, never failed on me. It shoots at 11 frames per second. Take a listen to this. So really fast if you're doing action photography or sports photography. It has Sony's excellent autofocus system. In this model, it has 179 autofocus points. So it's a little bit lower than the other models, but it is still definitely more than adequate for the average user. And even today, which is five years after this camera has been released, it feels relatively modern and it feels like all of the features that you really need are there. This camera records 1080p at up to 60 frames per second and it is nice and clear. If you do not plan on ever recording in 4K, then this is definitely a camera you should consider. 
these are coming down in price. So this is the most affordable camera out of the entire lineup. So the A6000 was released in 2014. Two years later in 2016, the A6300 came out. Now the A6300 featured a bunch of new features, most notably 4K video recording. You can see that indicated right at the top right there. So this camera will do 4K video at up to 30 frames per second. And what's great about Sony 4K is they actually downsample a 6K image down into 4K so that your 4K footage looks extra, extra clean and clear. So it is a very high resolution video camera if you are planning on recording in 4K. In addition to the improvements in 4K video recording, the A6300 features 1080p recording at up to 120 frames per second. So if you're planning on recording slow motion, 120 frames per second is great for slowing down footage. It is certainly a lot better than just 60 frames per second and slowing it down with the A6000. Now I mentioned before that the sensor on the A6300 was updated in 2016. So this sensor, although it's the same size and resolution, features some copper components. So again, it should be somewhat better in low light. In the real world, I don't really notice that very much, but it is there and so Sony claims it is better. What is more noticeable, however, is the improvement in autofocus here. Now this camera went to 425 autofocus points. So from 179 to 425, it's over twice as many autofocus points. So although the autofocus on the A6000 was already very good, it just got a whole lot better with the A6300. In addition to that, the electronic viewfinder's resolution was almost doubled, so it is a lot nicer to look through as far as composing your shots. This camera added a microphone jack so that you can mount an external microphone here on the hot shoe or on the side of your camera and get much better audio for your videos. As a whole, this camera body is a lot more better built than the A6000. This is a magnesium alloy body that is weather sealed unlike the composite body on the a6000 that is not weather sealed so if you're outside in the elements this is definitely a better camera now in addition the a6300 for video shooters also added s log and picture profiles so if you want to record using a specific flat picture profile and then color grade and color correct afterwards you can do that on the a6300 the a6300 also shoots at 11 frames per second just as fast as the A6000. Now what makes it a little bit better is the introduction of a silent shutter. So if you're trying to take pictures at a classical concert, for example, and you don't want that noise, you can turn that off with the A6300. The A6300 was released in February of 2016. In November of the same year, 2016, the A6500 was released. Now this camera offered a couple of new improvements over the A6300. Most notably, the A6500 came with IBIS or in-body image stabilization. Now what that is, is this sensor on the inside of this camera moves in five axes, so in five different directions to compensate for camera shake and movement. So if you are recording handheld video or if you're shooting photos, particularly in low light situations and you're using lenses that are not stabilized, this is a big help. In addition to the five axis in-body image stabilization, the buffer on this A6500 was expanded. Now, what the buffer is, is how many photos that you can take in a row using this camera without the camera stopping because it needs to process all of the images that you take. The buffer on the A6500 is over double that of the A6300. You can shoot up to 307 images in a row all at 11 frames per second and you can keep going for a long long time without the camera slowing down the electronic viewfinder and the screen are the exact same as those on the a6300 however sony added a touch screen to the a6500 you can see that mine is not working because i disabled it additionally sony added s and q modes or slow and quick modes to this camera so that you could shoot slow motion and in fast motion if you wanted to they also improved the menu system by adding a little bit of color to the tabs so it makes navigating a little bit easier than on previous models. The A6500 also features a more durable shutter release mechanism. According to Sony, it is tested up to 200,000 cycles. 
which is a lot. Sony also added an extra custom button here. So you have custom button one, custom button two, and then custom button three at the bottom on the back versus just having one custom button on the top with the previous two cameras. Last thing I'll mention is that the A6500 has an extended grip, which is especially nice if you have larger hands. It just protrudes a little bit more so that your fingers can get a better grasp of this camera. And if you're using larger, heavier lenses, it comes in very handy. Now I mentioned the touch screen on this camera. I disabled it because I noticed that when I was using the camera and I would put my eye up to the viewfinder, my cheek would touch the screen and then the camera would focus on something that I'm not trying to focus on. So it just became annoying. I turned it off, but in theory, the touch screen is nice to have if you do not use the viewfinder or if you have cheeks that don't get in the way of the screen. The battery life is slightly worse than the A6300 and the A6000 because of the IBIS and the touch screen. I have found the battery life to be about 15% worse um, or shorter than the previous cameras. And that brings us to the last camera here, which is the brand new A6400. Now I don't have a kit lens on it because I'm short one kit lens. This is just a Sigma lens for the time being. The A6400 was released in February of 2019. So it is the newest camera here. And that's why I have it on the end. Now, the way that Sony marketed this is that it should fit in between these two cameras, the A6300 and the A65 being the top end model. In my opinion, the A6400 is now the top end model and I'll go through all of the improvements and why I think that right now. So the first thing that Sony improved with the A6400 is they took the processor out of their $4,000 Sony A9 full frame camera and stuffed it into this tiny camera body. Now what that allowed Sony to do is make a whole host of improvements to this camera because it has a much newer, much more efficient processor. The biggest change and the biggest improvement in my opinion with the A6400 is the color science. Now if you are familiar with Sony's color science, it has not always been the best. It has been pretty decent with these camera bodies, but it made a giant leap forward with the A6400. I would say that the color science with the A6400 is very close, if not identical, to Sony's A7 III full frame camera, which is $2,000 and um, very highly regarded. So that is a huge improvement. You can see in these side-by-side -side photos. When I compared images from the A6400 to those from the A6500, skin tones were much better on the A6400. Colors were much more accurate and more vibrant. In addition to the colors, the autofocus on this camera has improved, believe it or not. Now the A6400 has 425 autofocus points. However, now all 425 of them are both phase detection and contrast detection autofocus points. In short, the autofocus is faster and more accurate with the A6400. Because of the newer, more efficient processor, Sony has introduced real-time eye autofocus so that you can track the eyes on your subject. If you're shooting a portrait, for example, of someone, this camera will lock onto the eyes and focus on the eyes as the subject moves around, it will follow and focus the eyes. As the subject turns his or her face away, it will track the face. And then if the face gets out of the shot, then the camera starts to track objects, which is really unique. The algorithms that they are using on the A6400 are unlike any other algorithms on any camera. Sony cameras have always been known, at least the APS-C cameras have been known to be some of the best autofocusing cameras in the entire world. And with the A6400, that is just a giant leap forward. Uh, it's very hard to take a picture that is not in focus with the A6400, at least with an autofocus lens. Another new feature with the A6400, the one that most people on the internet were most excited about, was a flip-up screen. Yes. Vloggers rejoice, uh, everyone was talking about it. Now, the screen on the previous models, I probably should have shown you this earlier, did not flip up. So it kind of just rotated up 180 and down slightly less than that. Now, the mechanism on this is pretty complicated and looks a little bit strange. And a lot of people complain that this screen should flip out instead of up, but I really do like the design. I think that it works well, it's compact, and you could still use it for kind of low angle shots or getting shots at different angles that you would not 
be able to get with a flip out screen. The A6400 also features built-in time lapse, which is something that you could have gotten with these other cameras, but you had to buy an application for. Another thing that Sony improved with the A6400 is the menu system. Basically what they did is they took the menu system directly from the A7 III, which again is a $2,000 full frame camera, and they stuffed it in here. So the colors are nice and vibrant. The tabs are nice and easy to navigate. There are a whole lot of settings though. You can see there's nine pages under this tab, 14 pages under the first tab. What is nice is that they included a My Menu so that you can put your most frequently used settings in a tab here and quickly access them without having to scroll through all of the various different tabs and menus. The next improvement with the A6400 is now there is no video record limit. The previous three cameras here had a 30 minute record limit, meaning that if you recorded a video, it would stop recording after 30 minutes and you would have to press the record button again. Whereas you can continue recording on the A6400 for as long as your battery will last and your memory card will not get full. Speaking of lasting a long time, the battery life on the A6400 is slightly improved. Although the battery is the exact same size and style, the more efficient processor allows about a 15% improvement in my tests in battery life. Another improvement with the A6400 is Sony included the HLG picture profile, which is kind of like an HDR video, shoots flat, and then you can color correct and bring out a whole lot of colors. It's great, it's better than S-Log, so if you are a filmmaker, that is definitely a nice feature to have. Another small improvement on the A6400 is this screen. Now the resolution is the same, but unlike the A6500, which if you are shooting outdoors, the screen will dim as soon as you hit the record button, this A6400 has a no dim screen. So outside, in direct sunlight, you can actually see what you are recording in 4K versus you kind of just had to guess with the A6500. The A6400 also included auto white balance lock, which allows you to specify if you want the camera to lock the white balance um, once you start recording a video, for example. So if you're splicing up a video, your shots are not going to go from light to dark to light to dark again, which is really nice to have. So those are the improvements with the A6400, and you might be thinking, well, what's the point of having an A6500? Well, the A6500 has really three things going for it. Number one is the grip on the A6500 is bigger. I know that's a small point, but it does make a difference. The body on the A6400 most closely matches the body on the A6300, so the grip is a little bit shorter, but it's very well built. The second advantage the A6500 has is the buffer. Now, the A6400 does not have the larger buffer of the A6500, so if you're shooting a lot of action or sports photography where you need to shoot 300 images in a row nonstop, this camera will accomplish that. The last advantage the A6500 has over the A6400 is that IBIS or in-body image stabilization. The A6400 doesn't have it, the A6500 does. If you're using stabilized lenses, that doesn't make a whole lot of difference, but if you are using unstabilized lenses or vintage lenses, the A6500 will make using those lenses a bit easier. Now let's talk about overheating with these cameras because that is definitely an issue that Sony has faced with their APS-C lineup. Now the A6000 is definitely the worst of the group when it comes to overheating. Typically you can expect to get about 30 minutes of video before this camera gets super hot and will shut off. The A6300 is a little bit better. Expect to get maybe 40 minutes or so, depending on conditions, indoor or outdoor, if you're in direct sunlight or not, and then this one will shut off. The A6500 does even better than the A6300. Typically, you're gonna be looking at 40 to 50 minutes of video before it will shut off. And the A6400 basically solved the overheating issue for Sony. I have used this camera to record over an hour and 10 or 15 minutes worth of video without any overheating issues whatsoever. I could have continued to record if my SD card had not filled up completely. This camera remained relatively cool to the touch, whereas the A6500 got really, really hot after about 40 minutes of video recording. I'm going to mention prices here really quickly just so that you guys have a reference. May of 2019, the going rate for an A6000 is about $450. 
A6300, your goal should be to buy it at about $750. The A6500 is still about $1,100, and the new A6400 comes in at $900. These are all body only, so without the kit lens. So the question at the end of the day is, which one of these cameras should you buy? Which one is the best bang for the buck? Which one is the best value with the best features? And that's a tough one. It really depends on what you're looking for, and it really depends on your budget as well. If you are looking for a great entry-level camera and you do not care about 4K at all, just get the A6000. You will be very happy with it. It is a camera that, although it is five years old now, is still better than much of its competition. Uh, definitely great for photography, great for 1080p video. You really cannot go wrong with this A6000. If you do record video or if you're starting a YouTube channel, I would definitely nudge you in the direction of one of these three cameras because they do have 4K video recording and the trend is definitely towards 4K or 8K or beyond. So if you want something that's a little bit more future-proof, get the step up over the A6000. Now the A6300 is a tough camera to recommend right now. The problem with this camera is that at the price of about $750 or more than that, it doesn't make any sense at all to buy this camera over the A6400. Add $100, add $150, get the A6400. It's a whole lot better than the A6300, whole lot newer, and you will be much happier with it. If you can find this one for very cheap, let's say 600, 650, that sort of range, and you don't have the spare change to pay 900 or 850 for the A6400, then I'd say the A6300 is still a great camera. As far as the A6500, this camera also has become a little bit harder to recommend because of the price and because the A6400 has so many newer, better features. If you are using vintage lenses, if you need that in-body image stabilization, if you need the larger buffer, if you like the additional grip and the custom button, this is definitely a great camera. It's better than these two. Um, and in some ways it's better than the A6400, but in other ways it isn't. It is the most expensive camera here though, so you really wanna make sure that you will be utilizing that IBIS or those extra little features over something like the A6400 to justify the increased price point. And that brings us to the A6400, which again is Sony's newest camera, and in my opinion, Sony's best APS-C camera. If you are new to Sony APS-C, you're just starting out, you're wondering which one of these four cameras to get, you have the budget for it, I would say buy the A6400. It's not the most expensive, it's not the cheapest, but it is, in my opinion, the most fully featured one with a whole bunch of improvements that make it a lot more worthwhile. You really cannot go wrong with the A6400, so I would definitely recommend that. So that is it for this four-way comparison video. It was a long video, but hopefully you guys learned a whole lot from it and enjoyed it. If you own one of these cameras and you are not yet subscribed to this channel, then definitely hit that subscribe button. This channel is geared entirely towards you guys. Um, it helps you find better lenses and better equipment for your APS-C E-mount cameras. Now, if you are interested in buying any one of these cameras, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I will have buying links down below to Amazon and B&H. And by using those, you do help support the channel. So thank you guys so much. Thanks for all of your likes, comments, and support. Stay tuned for more and have a nice day. Bye-bye.